Hey there, Jay Frederick here. So I thought I'd give a rundown of how uh, this track works. Um, it's called um, Artifacts and it, the idea of the track was kind of like something that's like uh, a romanticized idea of like uh, archaeology and like tombs and um, excavations in catacombs and um, things like that. Anyway, so we're just going to go through the track. Um, it's kind of a weird one, uh, tonally. Uh, the other idea was that uh, the main thing I wanted to do was to try to use, utilize the uh, Tibetan singing bowls. And um, so they, the tonality of those are kind of uh, strange. It's not a normal mode and it's not, uh, they're not diatonic uh, to any kind of uh, diatonic scale exactly. Um, so the way that I thought to make that work was to kind of go with something that's like um, uh, polytonal, so like two tonalities kind of working at the same time that you kind of hear. Uh, you hear some of this in 20th century classical music a lot. A lot of 20th century, 20th century classical composers at one time really uh, were big on polytonal uh, pieces. So the Korgalek tribe is sequencing the uh, modular synth. After that, I used the uh, uh, ditto looper uh, with a guitar and played some of the notes that I found, uh, looped those up. At that point, I brought the bowls in and um, I was playing the bowls more like an orchestral percussive instrument, like orchestral chimes or even vibes, where, as opposed to playing the bowls with, where you uh, make them resonate by um, doing this. Okay, so how I recorded the bowls. I wanted to, I definitely wanted to record in stereo, so I've set up two of these. Um, these are the Clippies. This is, they're from Mic Boosters, the Clippies EM272. Um, and you can get these uh, stands also from Mike Boosters that has the Rycoat um, uh, suspension pliers on here. And these are just really uh, inexpensive uh, tabletop tripods um, that you get like from B&H. I get those from B&H. And you take these lavaliers, clip it into here. And so I have two of those set up in a stereo pair in front of the bowls on the table. And then I have uh, overheads, two of these uh, Audio-Technica AT4022. Uh, these are omnidirectional um, condenser microphones. And because they're omnidirectional and you use them as overheads, uh, they get a, a, wide, a wider um, view sonically of the the bowls uh, so you don't have so much fall off when you go to one that's farther away. Okay, so the Korg, Electribe, uh, what's going on with that? So the first thing that I like to do with the Korg, especially for like the ambient kind of pieces, is to put the, the BPM as low as it will go uh, that way you get the longest sequence that you can have. Uh, so 20 BPM is what I have here. Swing, zero. Beat, we change that to 16, so we get the full length of, uh, of the sequence, as long as it can be. Uh, length, four bars, so again, as long as it can be. Um, I use the uh, wet reverb uh, for the effect. The key, the, this, this part is important. The key that we chose was F sharp. I tried a lot of different keys and all the different modes. And uh, the key of F sharp in the scale of, I'm not even sure what the scale is, to be honest. Uh, it's a diminished, it's some kind of diminished scale. I can't remember, it's been a while ago. A few of the others were close, but the best one 
was this uh, com diminished scale uh, with a total center of F sharp. So that's what we went with there. So if you go to the trigger mode of the Korg Electribe, then pad one goes here, pad two here, and then three, that's a Korg uh, synth. And so what we did here, this was the voice that I used uh, to play, to improvise freely. So on the keyboard, when you go to keyboard mode, And the way that's working, uh, it's going through the same way that I had it when it was set up over here. Um, it's going through the big sky and timeline through the aux of the mixer. Like this. And the way we have this voice is we use the uh, pulse, pulse wave, and we dialed in some of the modulation using the LFO uh, triangle. The modulation depth we set to 16, and the speed uh, was at 12 to give us a slightly out of tune. And this also helped with uh, making it uh, kind of fit with the with the bowls uh, because the tonality of the bowls were or is tonality of the bowls. And then the other two voices uh, from the Korg was just a basic saw wave with the same kind of um, LFO pitch modulation happening. It was doing kind of a drone um, that was basically making a pad. The one other voice was this, which was much lower in the mix, turned down on the Korg itself. Um, I didn't use that. <laughs> that was here, and this is... And so the trick with the Korg to get a uh, drone uh, is if you um, hold the pad down through the loop, when it loops back, you'll hear a click when it loops. Uh, but as long as you're recording, uh, while you're holding the pad, when the loop cycles, then uh, when it comes back, it won't have the click in it, even though you hear it when you do the initial recording. So that part sounded like this.
and then improvise. So next is the modular synth, and uh, for the modular for the modular we had um, the elements. Uh, the voices we're using would be elements on channel one here, and of the MIDI to CV converter. Um, then we have channel two is going to uh, rings. And rings is going through the monsoon, which is just uh, monsoons, just like uh, another variation of clouds, uh, and it's mostly just giving a lot of reverb, uh, and that's really all that's going on with this voice. That's sequ the, both of those are sequenced with the Korg Electribe. So the next voice is the uh, Intelligel Plonk, and it's using the overtone. Uh, sound and it's going through the Intelligel Rainmaker uh, delay. Uh, I'm not using any of the comb filtering or this, it's mostly just a ping pong delay and it uh, is sequenced through the Dofer A155 analog trigger sequencers. I have two of those and they're eight step sequencers but I have them um, in a linear fashion uh, so that you get a 16-step sequence and you do that using the dope for a 150 uh, dual voltage control switch into the a 182 uh, multiple switch that way you can have uh, so that the sequences run instead of two parallel eight-step sequencers they run in a linear 16-step sequence. Then the last voice is the plots, and plots is sequenced through the A155-1 8x16 trigger matrix uh, into uh, using a clock divider here, the A160 clock divider. Um, and it's a really simple, it's just one voice out of here, uh, and that voice is used to kind of sound like the um, the bowls, so it kind of has the same tonality, and it goes like this. So you can see it kind of sounds like the bowls. sequenced here so the nice thing about using um, the um, sequencers this way in combination with the Korg uh, sequencing is that you can work those two independently so you can have you can stop the sequencer in the Korg um, and keep the sequencers going um, and these two are independent the stop and start is independent um,
Okay, so uh, next we have the, uh, the Elements voice, which comes out here on channel one. Then the rings through the monsoon. Rings is going through the monsoon here for the reverb and then also the reverb from the big sky and the delay from the timeline. Then we can add in the Plonk, going through the Rainmaker, and then finally, plots through the A157 trigger matrix. So what we hear now is the uh, the two sequenced voices, the two voices sequenced from the Dofer sequencers, and then we add in the Korg uh, voices, the modular synth voices sequenced by the Korg elements, and the rings going through Monsoon. Then if we add in the uh, voices of the Korg, the two synth uh, pads, Then the improvised Korg voice. first recorded uh, a blank uh, or empty loop so that it wouldn't have a click when the loop repeats and then uh, volume swells uh, into the looper so that's loop one and then loop two um, played kind of the same material but uh, put the loop in half time and in reverse so when uh, I take it out of half time in reverse the loop plays uh, an octave up and in reverse and that one sounds like and also another version of the same uh, down down an octave so the two loops together loop one
So anyway, you hear kind of how this uh, has already established a tonal center uh, within the guitar part, uh, but that's different than the tonal center in the synth parts, uh, which you can hear. Um, this is the plots, the voice that sounds kind of like the bowls. And the more of the synth parts that we add in, the more you can hear the separation of the two, uh, two different key centers. So uh, if we add more of the synth parts, these are the modular synths. So that's the rings going through the Rainmaker. Both of these are the modular parts that are sequenced through the Dofert sequencers. And then if we add in the, uh, the other two modular voices uh, that are sequenced by the Korg Electribe and the Korg voices, uh, synth voices, which are, that's the elements, the pad that swells in. Then with the loops. And then if we add in the bowls, Okay, I think that about covers it. Um, don't forget to check out the uh, full video of the performance. Uh, the link is in the bio. And um, also, uh, like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications. And if you found this content useful, consider joining me over at my Patreon. Uh, your support there is most appreciated and helps me to continue making this content. Uh, as always, thanks for listening and have a great day.